example, Southern California Edison is planning on burying the nuclear waste. Millions of pounds of nuclear waste is being moved closer to the ocean at the San Onofre nuclear power plant. 1,400 metric tons of radioactive waste. Yeah, the now closed nuclear power plant was not designed for long-term storage. I remember asking somebody from San Onofre at a city event, do you guys have some kind of a disaster recovery plan for people if something happens to this nuclear thing? And the response was, well, we have our own internal plan. It's all good. And I go, well, what happens if it gets out uh, for others? Now we really don't have anything. For the most part in the rest of the country, nuclear plants that have been decommissioned are in remote locations um, and the communities are not huge. This is totally different. This is a nuclear plant you know, in the middle of, of a major urban area, um, lots of communities with different kinds of interests and so huge amount of, uh, huge amount of attention. We're stuck. We've got a plant that's being decommissioned. That's a good thing. It's got a tremendous amount of waste that's sitting there that's essentially stranded with nowhere to go. We certainly have enough examples in our world of accidents at Fukushima, at Chernobyl, at Three Mile Island, et cetera, et cetera. There isn't any issue for any resident of Orange County or San Diego County in a 50 mile radius, which is 8 million people, that I think has more significance because of the potential exposure. terrible location for a nuclear power plant, right? It's the mecca for surfing. It's got some of the most popular and best surf spots in the state of California, if not the world right there between Sano and Trestles. Uh, it's incredibly heavily used. It's the fifth most visited state park in California. Uh, it's in the middle of this densely populated metropolitan area. It's on the coast. It's seismically active. I mean, the list goes on as to reasons why this is a bad place to have this thing. To me, the biggest surprise in taking over this job as chairman of the Community Engagement Panel has been the extent to which um, people were surprised to find out that there was no place to send the spent fuel. Places, dozens of these places all over the US. There's like over 30 sites. We have the exact same problem. Um, and so it's a huge net. It's a problem for Santa, it's a problem for San Clemente in Southern California. And it's actually a national problem. federal government when they agreed to build all these plants and back in the 50s apparently had said that when they shut down they would move the storage off-site to a federal disposal site. Yucca Mountain, Nevada was targeted. Apparently they've spent 10 plus billion dollars preparing it, but Nevada apparently has said we're not going to accept it so you can't bring it here. Initially, they thought that that dry storage would, you know, would go into some type of canister and then get immediately get sent away to some permanent or interim storage facility that the Department of Energy established. First step would be moving the fuel, spent fuel that exists in wet storage today, moving it to dry storage. The benefits to transferring uh, high level radioactive waste from cooling pools to dry storage is that it allows for passive cooling, so it no longer requires continual additions of water, of coolant, of electricity, of power. Um, 
Additionally, instead of having thousands of fuel assemblies next to each other in a pool in case something goes wrong, canisters are sealed and have much fewer assemblies in each canister. The one that Songs is using is uh, MPC 37, so there's 37 spent fuel assemblies in each canister. Uh, we're not burying the fuel in the, in the, uh, in the sand, so to speak. Uh, what we have built is a, uh, a very uh, robust and rugged structure uh, built of concrete, uh, reinforced with uh, steel, um, um, with um, uh, locations to store canisters of fuel, okay, uh, which provides shielding um, and a, a, a closed environment, if you will, uh, that uh, the canisters are well protected. They're planning on putting them, and they have in fact installed them, in half-inch thin containers that have no radiation detectors on them, where most of the plants in the world use 10 to 20 inch thick storage containers with radiation detectors and other safety devices. We're told that of those 70 containers coming in that are 16 feet high by 6 feet wide, one of them has enough waste that was released at the Chernobyl accident. So what you, you need to do is you need to first of all probably stop any current cast loading, see if you can identify an area that would be more preferable where you would not necessarily have to bury the canisters, where you could put them in a protected environment above ground, and you would also be in an area that's a little bit um, farther from uh, the, the, the coast and a little higher elevation, so you eliminate the potential for um, water intrusion and changes in environmental conditions that could impact the safety of the fuel. The likelihood that a canister would, would develop cracking is very low to begin with. Uh, if it did, it would be detected early through, early through this uh, aging management program and um, uh, then you could, we could take steps. A crack would not just happen like that, right, to go through a wall if it did happen. So, you know, we're taking all these steps. We can monitor and measure and uh, understand what's happening with our canisters over time. So we feel that we've got a very safe system. <clears throat> About 12.30, August 3rd, we're downloading. And uh, the canister didn't download, but the rigging came all the way down. Uh, it was gross errors on the part of two individuals. <clears throat> there were gross errors on the part of two, of two, two individuals, the operator and the rigger, um, that are inexplicable. Um, so what we have is, is a canister that could have fallen 18 feet. <clears throat> it's a bad day. That happened. And you haven't heard about it. That's not right. Public safety should be first. And I've been around nuclear for many years. It's not. Behind that gate, it's not. Yes, yeah, so as, as I see it, almost everybody wants the same thing, which is the prompt removal of the spent fuel from the San Onofre site. Almost everybody wants that. There's still a lot of disagreement about the best way to get that done. And I am very concerned that the disagreements are gonna distract us from the common mission. And in particular, there are some folks looking at solutions that are not realistic. And so it's, I'm glad that people are exploring those, but at some point we need to focus on what's realistic. And we really have to be careful that we don't allow divisions, fissures that arise inside the community over different strategies to distract people from the, from the common mission. We're very much aligned with the folks here that want to see the fuel move sooner than later. We do too. We're basically for a permanent facility, consolidated interim storage facility, uh, any, any answer that would get the fuel moved off of this site. The, the really big frontier is political. It's, it's helping communities like ours understand our common purpose and mission and join up around that and then getting our folks in Washington to deliver on that. You know, the only way maybe we make this an issue is by being vocal in our local communities at the state level and at the federal level. Uh, really what we would encourage people to do is contact their, uh, their local representative, whether it's a state representative or a federal representative or both. Contact them, encourage them to do something about the situation with, with uh, the storage of, of spent fuel so that we can find a, a, you know, either a permanent repository or a consolidated interim storage facility solution uh, to that, that problem.
I think if we can build enough momentum with enough people reaching out, you know, the squeaky wheel does get the grease in Congress, and so, you know, that, that for us, we think that's what needs to be done. We, yeah. we need to elevate this issue to a national priority. People want the spent fuel to move, and so I'd say, learn about what the real options are, come to one of the community engagement panel meetings, or more than one, go visit the plant they're, wa they're walking towards, and then we need to get organized at the state level and at the federal level. There's a lot of things people can do, and uh, we would encourage that they become more active in, uh, in meeting us and knowing more about what's going on.